now we are running into our interview. Right now we're going to we're about to talk about commercial airline safety, safety and we have our guest here with us and his name is Captain Remy Etta, an airline pilot and ground instructor. Thank you for gracing us with your presence, Captain. Thank you and good Thank morning. You Thank you for coming on the show. All right, so um, first of all, we're talking about commercial airline safety, like we already established. And um, I think, first of all, we would like to establish, now, what does commercial airline safety entail, please? Safety, I will say, from my own point of view, it's not really a problem in the airline industry because the system has been designed in such a way that it is a safe system. Uh, occasionally, things happen out of the normal, like I said, occasionally. Okay. And uh, when this happens, people who are not in the industry try to cast aspersion on the industry. But I can tell you for a fact that um, the industry is well regulated and very, very safe. Okay. Particularly, like you said, commercial. Commercial means that you are engaged in collecting some revenue from individuals to move either them or their cargo or their meals from place to place. So for that to be done effectively, you have the civil aviation authorities. Now, the civil aviation authority in every country regulates the operations of the operator. I'm a pilot today. I have a license. I have to renew the license on a regular basis. The airline operator, the man running the airplane, has a maintenance schedule to do on the aircraft. It cannot be dodged. It cannot be postponed. It's done as at when due. The man carrying out the maintenance is a licensed engineer. He has been trained to do that. Now, we see it's, uh, it's an industry covered with a lot of paperwork and a lot of, like uh, you, may, I, you heard me mention, licenses. Mm -hmm. Everybody is licensed to do his own part of the job. So everybody lines up. Occasionally, based on um, records, you've heard of the Swiss cheese model, right? Have you ever heard of the Swiss cheese model where mm. the holes in the cheese line up? Yes. And okay. then when they form that line, line of sight, then there is a problem. Like we said, we are humans. Occasionally, these things happen. happen. But the industry is set up in such a way to prevent these happenings. Because of that, in this industry, we kind of study, or will I say we read throughout your life. For you to maintain your currency, to keep your license current, you must, ex um, will I say, how will I put it? You need to exhibit a certain level of competency and systems knowledge, which will be tested every six months. Six months. Every six months? Yes. Six months. And if you are not found competent, no matter your experience, you are told to go back and bring yourself to a level of competency. The same thing with the aircraft. The aircraft has a maintenance schedule. It's a mechanical instrument, right? Or it's a machine. Yes. So occasionally it develops problems. That's normal. So what happens? This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. The man who is trained to do that does his own part of it. He doesn't cut corners. You see? Because everything he does is recorded. It's going to record that I removed part A with part number this, replaced it with part B with part number this. In accident and investigation, be rest assured that if anything happens, that part he removed, the history will be found In from when it was produced. Mm. The part that was replaced, the history will be discovered from when it was produced. produced. So you see, everything is highly regulated and set up in a way that aviation as it is, commercial aviation is very regulated and very safe. So, uh, talking about emergencies like that, yeah. what is the role of the pilots in such an emergency? We are made to understand that it is an aircraft, right? Mm -hmm. The aircraft occasionally will do what it's not meant to do. Okay. And so you are trained in that particular aircraft. You don't just, I won't just, well, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot today. Mm -hmm. okay. I will not walk into an Embraer or an Airbus and begin to fly. I'm not oh. typerated oh, on so that So you are specifically mission. trained. So you are specifically typerated. Mm. The statement is called typerating. Typerate, you are typerated okay. on that aircraft. And when they issue you a typerating, it is believed that you have received 
a level of training and you have demonstrated a level of competency in handling that aircraft, particularly in emergencies. Okay. Anybody can take off and land. But the issue now is handling, understanding, interpreting the emergency. Some look like each other. So if this looks like this one, what and what do I check to know that, to differentiate this from this? So that is where the type rating comes in. You are trained to handle that. So when we have emergency cases, how should passengers on board, how should they behave? Normal thing with human beings. Human beings are known to panic and go into <laughs> hysterics, <laughs> yes. you know. Even common turbulence. Don't mind me calling it common. You know, mm -hmm. you see people practically freaking out and mm -hmm. screaming and praying. Yes. The thing is, the pilot will first of all fly the aircraft which is to keep the aircraft safe. Okay. Time permitting is going to talk to you. You know, 90% of the time or more, he would have actually called in the cabin crew who okay. will be able to have access to him so that while he's managing the situation with the aircraft, he will tell them that, look, this is what is going on. This is what is going on. Prepare the um, cabin. Put all everything away, tell the passengers to put away their baggage and mm -hmm. everything. The landing may not be the same way we are all used to. So at that time, nothing. The, the people are trained. You just, no, it's human, you must panic, but obey instructions. Okay. If they tell you remove your shoes, please remove your shoes and put them away. It's for a reason. They tell you store your bag in the overhead compartment at that time, not even the little what do you call that little one that is like a purse, the yeah. size above the purse, mm -hmm. we want it in there. That's not when you say you have money inside. It has to be Pretty locked up. You say, yeah, it's for a reason. I know you've already stated that, you know, um, aircraft, aircraft um, dynamics are created to be generally safe because you're dealing with lives. Yes. But would you say that between back then and now, which is safer? Are we less safe or safer now than 10 to 20 years ago? Well, I don't know where you got the statistics from. <laughs> That's why we want to verify how true I that was, is. I was trained in Boeing, by Boeing. Okay. And the statistics we had showed that there has been a marked improvement hmm. in um, safety in terms okay. of crashes, ground collisions, incidents, and accidents. First of all, 20 years ago, the amount of aircrafts flying in the skies were not the amount of aircrafts flying mm, today. Nah, sure. So when you take the statistics vis-a-vis -vis the amount of aircraft flying, the amount of passengers being flown, and the statistics to show how much, um, I wanted to say whole loss, that's a statement we use, okay, okay. how many aircraft have crashed, how mm -hmm. many fatalities, you find out that it is still better now than what it was 20, 30 years ago. ago. Systems mm -hmm. have been better <coughs> developed to help the pilots and help the machine. Machines are more friendly to fly compared to the older ones. And um, the systems have just been set up in such a way now that uh, they are made to be fail-proof. Okay. So even but when they fail, you have backup one and sometimes as much as backup two mm -hmm. so that you are not left hanging. Okay. So, in essence, it's safe to say that it is much safer now. It is much but safer now. But it would seem like there are more accidents because there's a, there's more, there's a greater Increase. number of planes yes. that are flying than back then. Would you say that? No. Okay. There is more media now than okay. 20 years ago. 20 years ago. What mm -hmm. happens is that 20 years ago, if a plane crashed in Russia, right? Yes. What will happen is you'll probably get to hear it after it has gone through Reuters and Nance. So, you'll probably be hearing mm -hmm. it if it happened on Monday... You will be hearing it on Thursday, Thursday right? Okay. But now, I can tell you, if we are in this studio now and a plane crashes my, um, anywhere in the world with a significant amount of passengers, you may probably inter interrupt this program yes. to aid it because yeah. where everything is happening Breaking now news. in real time. So we tend to have the impression that it's more. No, actually what has happened is that more media, things, more we have more media interaction. The world has become one village. Can you outline any 
measures or what the measures are in, in, in the event of emergency in a plane, what are the things that you need to tick off at least as a passenger and maybe as a pilot too as emergency safety measures at that point in time? Um, I'm governed by a checklist called the non-normal checklist. When I encounter a non-normal situation or, like you said, emergency, I have a list of steps to take. The key thing, like I said, is take the aircraft and your passengers and yourself to safety. Now, the passengers, I'll actually say the best thing to do is listen to instructions. You'll be surprised. When you get into an aircraft, there's a demonstration. You see the cabin crew telling you fasten yes. your seatbelt and this. How many percent of passengers actually listen to that? Well, we not listen. so much. Okay. Not so You'll much. be shocked that more than 80% of passengers do not listen not to listen. that. Hmm. Yes. I used to be a cabin crew, so I know what I'm talking about. They don't listen to that brief. So... First thing passengers should do is when you get into the aircraft, just put away your phones that time. Listen. Pay attentive. Listen to what the cabin crew, the brief is, yeah. the briefing going on. Now, when that is done, if you as a passenger see something you don't like, right? The, the best thing to do is call the attention of the cabin crew. Ah, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this here. You understand me? Yes. Like when we are descending, you have what we call the speed brakes. You know, if you are seated by the wings, you will see it come up yes. like this. It will come up. You see it flat, come up. I've had passengers call the cabin crew that um, see you. <laughs> something, something wants to break off. It has flown open. It's not. It's, but I like those kind of passengers. They are observant. Mm. And in an emergency, they'll probably be the first people to get out of the aircraft and move other people. But the key thing for passengers, please listen to the instructions of the cabin crew. That's all. They are well trained. Those people are not there for tea and coffee. And it's a very regulated industry. People are very careful because what happens today, if there's a crash, mm -hmm. they will go to that pilot's records right from flying school. They will, if the instructors who took you in your basic training are alive, they are going to interview them. How was he? Wow. What was he? Someone who comes to school late? Was he an alcoholic? They, they begin to investigate your questions. Their, yeah, because the manufacturer, as much as possible, wants to prove that it's not his aircraft that had the problem that went down. You know, everybody tries to put it on pilot mm. error. So the pilot has to be very, very disciplined. You start from school days, you see. So... It's set up that way. Once somebody is not confident that um, this person in future, not even then, the way it's going, he may not be able to perform to a level of confidence that yes. I would say is safe. They will refuse to append their name and signature to your training. Okay. Because whatever happens in future will be referred. It becomes a trail down. Okay, you released him. What and what did you see in him that you released him to go online, you know? And by the time one or two or three people um, say, have question. some concerns yeah. about, about it, it really person. becomes a problem. It's true. Aviation is called a leveler. You know why? Why? In this country that people can take a pen and say, give him a job. Right? Mm -hmm. You get to prove who's really I mean, worth it. No matter who sends you to the airline to say, this is my brother, this is my son. Mm. If the airline is not comfortable with what you demonstrate, that you will be able to perform that, those duties, nobody will endorse you to continue the job. So when you go to the airport, you see a little boy of 19 or 21 striding to the aircraft to fly the aircraft. He has proved himself. He has written myriads of exams he has written, he has gone through simulation to reach that level of confidence that they will say, okay, young man, that's a $48 million machine. Take it from A to B. You have 126 or 132 people on your aircraft. 